It is Valentine's Day today, and we are sharing the love. Today's show is all about magical moments where dogs have helped connect two people and helped love blossom. Hello, I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. And I'm Claire Mansell in London, England. Welcome to Dog Edition. Where voices from around the world consider all things dog. Dog Edition is the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. Today is a feel-good episode where we (laughs) kick back and hear the tales of canine matchmakers. Special dogs who sparked a connection between two single dog lovers and made magic happen. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's go for a walk, because we've got a lot to talk about on today's episode of Dog Edition. Hey Pepper, wanna go for a walk? We've talked before on this show about the special power that dogs have to act as social lubricants, starting conversations and bringing people together. They are so good for that, Mm -hmm. especially if you move to a new place and you're looking to meet people. Yes, I've often found that dogs are a great entree. When I was dating many years ago, (laughs) uh, I would find that I had a little white dog who would go over to the girls and, oh, she's so cute. And then I would have a conversation and sometimes I would get some phone numbers. So yeah, (laughs) they can be useful in in opening up uh, conversations that may not otherwise happen. This is amazing. Now, are you going to confess that you got the dog explicitly for this or is this just accidental that you just discovered this after you got the dog. <laughs> okay, you know that. Okay, this is this is the backstory. Yeah, I may have had this in mind a long time ago when I was selecting Maui, who was a Maltese who was very instrumental in my life for lots of reasons. But yeah, she was awfully attractive and and I did train her to like go to people if I said go there. And then she would do it and then oftentimes they would look down and and play and begin a conversation. <laughs> This is an amazing revelation. And you know what? There is some science behind it as well. There was some research conducted by the University of Western Australia, and they looked at two and a half thousand people in four cities in Australia. And it showed that dog owners are five times more likely to know people in their neighbourhood compared to other pet owners. So not just even compared to people who don't have pets at all, compared to people who have cats or (laughs) crocodiles. Of of course. (laughs) And those figures from the research seem to match what we found when we went to dog parks and spoke with people about their experiences. Absolutely, 100%. I'd say that since having my dog, more people come up and speak to me compared to when I didn't have a dog. I think randomly people would just walk up to someone in a park or even in the street and talk to you. So I definitely think it helps break down those barriers. Oh, oh God, definitely. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt, just make you. Definitely. I've got a really good friend that I met through dog training. Yeah, it does, yes. Definitely. Become more social. Neighbours just around the corner from us, we get on really well with, and our dogs used to get on well together, so yes. I love those cuts. I just met you. I think that's great. (laughs) Some of those meetings actually lead to more than friendship. And because we love dogs and we love happy stories, we thought that we would share with you three tales of dogs who have acted as matchmakers for their owners. First, we're going to Canada to meet Kim Saravanamutu. I had wanted a dog forever, and I tested the hypothesis by walking dogs at our Humane Society here in Ottawa for a year. And after a year, when I was still keen as a volunteer dog walker, I decided to get a dog. And up where my parents were living, they had a neighbor who had these two Australian shepherds I admired. I was late 20s, first real job, first real apartment. And I went over to this breeder and I walked in. There were half a dozen puppies left from this litter. And this one female blue merle pup just kept coming and sitting on my foot. So uh, she chose me and uh, that was that. 
That dog was named Matilda. Good Australian name, you see there. Mm -hmm. Known as Tilly. And when the time came to collect her, it was actually in the middle of a historic ice storm. <laughs> and the breeder was seven hours drive away. Oh. So Kim actually had to get her flown via Air Canada wow. instead. And so that was quite a memorable start for her to dog ownership. Now, fast forward a few years and Tilly and Kim are living in Ottawa. She split up with a long-term partner, and she's been on a big trip in China. She comes back, and she's having a good catch-up with everyone. We came back after a month abroad, and I was catching up with some friends, and I had a friend to lunch, and that friend stayed rather late. So I was off my usual schedule of dog walking that day. And so I went to a park that was quite popular for off-leash dog walking in Ottawa. It's called the Arboretum. It's a showcase for tree species. So beautiful specimens of uh, trees and they have little plaques on them. Sounds lovely. It is lovely because I've actually been there. It really is lovely. The Arboretum. We'll have a link in the show notes so you can check it out yourself. I had a route I normally did, but not at my usual time. So I was heading back to my car and walking across an expanse of grass and coming towards me on the same path was this young man walking his dog. And our eyes met and he was just so arresting and he was going to walk right past. So Kim had to do something to attract this guy's attention. Because this was the moment of fate. I had to do something to initiate a conversation. And the only sort of thing I had with me was a tennis ball. So I threw, I threw the tennis ball and he had a dog. Now he had a dog called a flat coated retriever. Uh, not that common for a reason, very difficult to train and not very well behaved, this particular one, but beautiful. So he had this flat coated retriever named Camden and his dog got the tennis ball and refused to give it back. So he was forced to stop and uh, talk with me. She is taking a uh, play out of my playbook. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is in this beautiful spot, two beautiful people, two beautiful dogs, and the magic is happening. Yeah, not quite, Jim, because remember, this is early summer in Ottawa. So here comes the passion killer. And it was quite awkward, really. In Canada, we have a period of time where these insects come out in the springtime and they're called black flies, which sound pretty innocuous. For a British audience, I think you'd have to imagine a cloud of midges. But imagine each midge has teeth like a great white shark. <laughs> So we're getting bitten by these black flies and uh, we're having this really awkward conversation. So they're being eaten alive. <laughs> I like the giant shark mouth. Yeah. yeah. By black flies. And Kim was about to leave the park and escape to the safety of her air conditioned car. But she had just met this guy. So what happened? She did what any normal sane person would do when they're surrounded by black flies, which is she pretended she just arrived in the park so she could do another loop. <laughs> but just before she started walking with this guy, she noticed something that could have been a deal breaker. I did have momentary qualm because he was wearing black dress socks under sandals. So what he had done was come home from work on a warm day, changed his, you know, dress trousers into shorts and threw some sandals over his shoes and taken his dog straight to the Arboretum for a walk. Oh, Jim, those snap judgments <laughs> that we make about people. I have to tell you this story. I once didn't date a guy because of his choice of toilet paper. Oh, what? <laughs> I kid you not, I went and I used his bathroom yeah. in his house and he had this kind of like beige coloured toilet roll with like flowers on it. And I just thought I could never be with him because of the toilet roll. You're a plain white kind of woman. <laughs> oh, my so, God. Well, yeah, whatever, that, that killed... <laughs> whatever happened to the guy? <laughs> um He's he's now he's now very high up in the BBC and very important. <laughs> huh. 
<laughs> well, you're on Dog Podcast Network, and I bet he's still with that kind of uh, floofy uh, toilet paper. Or maybe it was on sale. Maybe his mum bought it for him, which is probably much closer to the truth. Yeah. So I'm guessing, as a man, Jim, that you don't make these snap judgments about women. I think women are much worse at it. Is that true? I don't do that, but I have been known to judge, but not snap judgments and certainly not about toilet paper. And I would love to hear, actually, if anyone is listening to this who disagrees or agrees on the whole snap judgments thing, you know, do reach out to us on social media or via our website, because I'd, I'd love to know. I think this is very much a female thing, perhaps. But anyway, back to the story. She sees past the socks and sandals thing, and they walk around the park with their dogs, and they're chatting away. We walk back to the car park or the parking lot where we had left the cars and he suggested meeting the next day at the same time for another dog walk, which we did. He was there and we spent 45 minutes, an hour, whatever it was, walking around this uh, city park. And at the end of that walk, when we walked back to the cars, he invited me out for dinner. Well done, Camden and Tilly. You were there to seal the deal. Nice work, dogs. We've been married 20 years, and we have two children, one in university and one finishing off high school. That's a great story, isn't it? It is. And if you are wondering if this really works as a way to meet people, we asked Kim why meeting a fellow dog lover was so appealing. If you meet a young person with a dog, you know they've reached a certain level of being able to care for another animal. There is sort of an entry level of reliability, dependability, care and compassion to keep that animal healthy and well exercised. So that's encouraging. And then if someone is taking the effort to drive their dog or take their dog to a local park for a fairly significant daily exercise period, likely enough, they're interested in the outdoors and being active, which were important to me. So next up, we are traveling south to Nevada, USA, where Carol and Chris Healy told us their story of how they met. I was at the boat sport and RV show putting on a boating safety booth. And then on the other aisle away from us was the Truckee Meadows Dog Training Club. I was in another relationship. I wasn't looking for an egg, but I was looking for a dog. And there was this just gorgeous brown-spotted Dalmatian named Toddy. Those brown-spotted, they're liver spots, I think is what they call them. Those are less common. And of course, they do get a lot of attention because they're so beautiful. Yeah, and... I know because I've worked at a few exhibitions as well that you do end up wandering around and chatting to other stall holders. And I would definitely be the person who is talking to the dog on the stand next to me. (laughs) Absolutely. During the five days of the show, I would go pay a visit. And eventually I noticed that this beautiful dog was attached to a rather tall and beautiful woman. He eventually noticed. Well, don't forget he was in a relationship Uh, and he wasn't looking. (laughs) Carol also took a while to notice him, even though he was visiting the dog quite a lot. We had so many people at our booth that we didn't really register for a while. We have a lot of people come up and they want to pet the dogs. And we're a very popular booth at that particular show. And so we, you know, say hi to everybody. We get every question under the sun. And his was, I'm allergic to dogs, but I would like to buy a dog. (laughs) It's like, oh, okay. So I did say poodles are fun and they're nice and maybe you'd like to get a poodle. I had no idea at the time that he was scoping me out. So for professional purposes only, Chris did get Carol's number, you know, just in case there was a poodle that needed some training somewhere down the line. About eight or nine months later, I had bought a poodle and I hired Carol to be the dog trainer and Eventually, my other relationship went south, and uh, so I kept hiring her to train the dog, pretending the dog was stupid. His dog just wasn't a very good learner, it seemed. (laughs) But in Fergus's memory, it probably was not the dog. (laughs) Fortunately for Chris, Carol did not give up on his dog entirely (laughs) before he managed to pluck up the courage to ask her out for dinner. 35 years last June, it was kind of a whirlwind. Once we got going, it got passionate quickly. And, uh, you know, that old movie where they say you must love dogs. Well, she married the right guy. 
35 years later, I, I guess she did pick the right guy. So we asked Carol why she thinks dogs are so great at bringing people together. Dogs are the best icebreakers. You don't feel in any way intimidated on asking somebody about their dog. And you know they will always talk to you about their dogs because that's the way dog people are. And so it, it's just a super easy way to introduce yourself to somebody just by commenting on their dog. So we've heard two love stories so far. Coming up after the break, we head to Europe for a story of a dog that started a friendship that became a love story. Hmm. Stick around. We'll be right back. And now, a message from your dog. Every day with you is like a day at the beach. And I want as many beach days as possible. I want to run and sniff and find a good stick to carry. I want to roll in the grass and warm my belly in the sun. I want to walk with you, run with you, sleep with you, eat with you. And when I eat with you, I want Ever Pup. The green, grassy, beef liver spiked smell wakes my senses. You may not realize this, but it tastes like homemade gravy, especially when you wet it. It infuses any food you give me with health and life and vibrancy. I can feel it. Everpup traveling to every cell in my body, nourishing each one. Does it roll back time? Of course not, not really. But it helps me feel like I'm on top of the world. I'm so glad you're giving it to me every day because every day I'm so glad to be with you. I'm so grateful to be your dog and for the ever pup you give me. So now that you know what your dog wants, get Everpup, the ultimate dog supplement. Everpup is available in select pet shops and on Amazon. But to get the best price possible, join the Everpup Club at everpupclub.com, where you'll get your first jar for just $8 with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Go to everpupclub.com and use the discount code DPN. That is everpupclub.com. Everpup every day. Welcome back to Dog Edition for our special Valentine's Day episode. Before the break, we heard the stories of Kim and Neil and Carol and Chris, whose dogs were instrumental to their meeting and who between them now have 55 years of marriage and four children as a result. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Now we're going to head to Europe. Martina Miradoli has always been an animal lover. But when she decided she wanted to travel and study in the UK, she realised that the kind of pets she'd grown up with weren't very portable. My background as a young person was with horses and cats. I wanted to travel, I wanted to not be, you know, in one place. So I said to my mom, maybe it's time for me to get a dog. Everyone in the world of horses have dogs. It turned out that getting that first dog, a collie by the name of Abigail, was a life-changing decision for Martina. She changed my life because I decided I didn't want to work with horses anymore. I decided I wanted to work with dogs. <laughs> I decided to leave horses. Martina worked at farms around the UK, but always taking the jobs that would allow her and her dogs, because she had two of them by then, to stay in the farm accommodation. Eventually, though, she built up some experience in dog training, and she set up her own business. Which is when she met her partner, Beck. She's originally from Somerset and she moved to the city where I am now. And she got a third dog and she was looking for a puppy class in the area. So she asked on a local group and one of the classes that was recommended was mine. So she got in touch with me and said, I've got a puppy and I would like to start classes in you know, the beginning of the year. Now, a bit like Carol and Chris, when Beck and Martina first met, there was no hint that it would be anything romantic. There was a connection, I think, straight away because we became good friends. We both moved to the area very recently, so didn't have a lot of friends. And she was studying at the time, so she had some free time. And we just started, you know, going for walks, really, with dogs. For two years, Martina and Beck grew closer as friends, and then the pandemic hit. So from going out for walks as friends and training together, because she was coming to my classes still, two years later with her dogs, agility and compatible obedience. Of course, we were locked away for three months. 
They couldn't do the walks together anymore, like a lot of us during the pandemic. And Beck's marriage, which had already been in trouble, was suddenly under a lot of extra pressure when she and her wife were shut in together during lockdown. Well, lockdown gave a lot of people a chance to really think about their lives and reevaluate what was important and what really mattered to them. At the end of the pandemic, the first actually night out, I was invited for a birthday at their home. I think looking back the first time I saw her after a long time, something sparked, but I didn't even know what it was. You know, I always thought it's just friendship. And that was June 2020. And then in July 2020, we were going for a walk with the dogs. And she told me that she told the wife she was moving out. And I remember that something, I think, sparked at that moment. Martina was surprised that their friendship had turned into something a little bit more. So I'm 40 now. And at 38, I thought I was straight. But she says that their mutual love for dogs has been a really important foundation for their relationship. I think, you know, when you meet someone that has the same kind of main obsession, then everything is just easier. We go on holiday with the dogs. Everything is about the dogs. The house is set up for the dogs. You know, it's all about the dogs. So our three couples that we've been speaking about were brought together in different circumstances by their dogs, and they are not alone. Our research turned up a few celebrities who have also met this way. Now, two British TV hosts, which I'm afraid you probably haven't heard of, Jim, but for our British audience, Davina McCall and Ben Fogel met their spouses separately, by the way. They're not married to each other. They are two different TV hosts, both while walking dogs in parks in London. And here in the United States, pro skateboarder Ryan Sheckler met his wife, Abigail, while they were out walking their dogs, and they met, and they have a baby that is due in a few weeks. Now, two of our guests on previous episodes of Dog Edition also met through their dogs. Mm -hmm. Emma, owner of Hope, the globe-trotting pit bull, who was the star of our episode 69, met her boyfriend whilst their dogs were in the kennels on the Queen Mary 2. And you can hear him on episode 71. And Janine Stanley, whose Christmas poem was featured in episode 77, met her partner through her service dog. We're pretty sure that we are only just scratching the surface of stories of dogs who have started relationships, introduced people to new business clients, or started lifelong friendships. In fact, my wife was, in fact, drawn to me when she read an early manuscript we met online through an online dating app back many, many, many years ago. And she read a manuscript that I had written before it was published called How to Meditate with Your Dog. And just reading the relationship between me and Maui, who I mentioned earlier, Mm -hmm. was enough to make her think, huh. He's the kind of guy I like. So you don't necessarily have to meet in person. It's just the connection that you have with dogs. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and thinking, well, that's me. I, I met because of a dog. Please get in touch with us because we would love to hear your story. And you never know. Well, maybe we'll make a second round of canine matchmakers for Valentine's Day next year. Well, that is all the time we have for today's show. I want to thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow Dog Edition in your favorite podcast app and check out our range of podcasts for dog lovers at dogpodcastnetwork.com. And, you know, as I said earlier on the show, we always love to hear from you. So if you want to reach out to us on social media and touch on anything we've mentioned in the show today, we would love that. I'm Claire Mansell. And I'm James Jacobson. I want to thank you for listening to Dog Edition today. On behalf of all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, I'd like to wish you and your dog a lot of love and a very warm aloha. Aloha.